Hey there guys! Happy Wednesday! Thank you for joining me tonight. If you're new, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I am here every weeknight, uh, and we're going to be making something. We relax and craft and uh, work on a project together here on the weeknights. And tonight, I am continuing the Jacqueline Steves I Love Home Block of the Month and uh, on Monday we started this. I wasn't here last night, but Monday we started this and I showed how I, w how I do my, uh, how I picked up my fabric. I'm changing the colors a little bit. So I showed my process on that and we started cutting the white fabric. Uh, we're gonna finish cutting the white fabric today and I'm gonna move on to the next fabric. Let's get this cut out as fast as we can. I am cutting out the entire quilt before getting started per the instructions. Uh, if you would like to join in, there is a link for the free quilt along in my post here. And uh, you can also win a, a box of Aurofil thread too, and there's instructions how to do that as well. So let's get going right away, guys. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to flip you around. Okay, here we are. So on Monday, well, first of all, here is what we're doing. Uh, on Monday, I, I marked out how much yardage I needed of each color. And uh, so here's where I got that information, but I'm just like the white, I'm making a mark for the white because I have switched uh, a bunch of colors around. So now this pink is blue. Uh, and some other colors have changed as well. So if you want to, you know, if you get confused with why I'm using whatever colors I'm using tonight, watch Monday's video. That's how I switched, share how I switched around the colors and got going on this. But we're going to continue with cutting. I cut all this yesterday or on Monday. So this is my, this is my white pile. Even though it's cream, I am labeling it the white. So that's that's all of these pieces around here. Everything that's white on here is going to be this cream. All right, so I'm going to set this aside. That stuff is done. Let's see where we left off. So here are my cutting instructions. I have check mark off the ones that are done. So let's see, where do we need to go next? Uh, I got, oh, I need two more of the two inch with a fabric strip. So we, we, got, uh, we got four out of my fabric yesterday on Monday, but then I ran out of fabric. I am not uh, using yardage. I am using uh, scraps of what I have. Here are my four that I have done. I'm gonna put those to the side. Uh, so I, I happen to have a yard cut of this, but then I ran out of that yard cut. So this is an additional yard cut that we will start cutting these, uh, the rest of these with the fabric pieces out. So first of all, I need to iron. So uh, last time we worked on a project, I didn't iron beforehand just cause, I don't know, maybe I got lazy, but you guys were mad at me. <laughs> and I was kind of mad at myself too. It does make things easier to, to, uh, press beforehand, especially for things like quilts when everything needs to be super duper precise. So, all right, here we go. Uh, I do not have any, any start or any, uh, any water in my, my iron. So I'm going to use starch and use a dry iron instead. So this starch is kind of acting as my steam. So I'm just going to spritz a bit on. Oops, I think I sprayed my, my iron a little. So let's press through this fabric. I think this is all the fabric I'm gonna need. I had two extra fat quarters hanging out in case I still needed that fabric uh, for yardage, but I think based on what's uh, still needed, I, I think I can get the rest out of this, this yard, which will be good. So have any of you guys started uh, your I Love Home blocks yet? Uh, or, you know, we only have the first block. The first block came out on, um, on Monday. Has anyone ever used the tulip fabric markers? I have not used those, Sherry. Uh, I'm, I'm using a fabric marker I had 
God, ages, years and years ago. It'd be fun to do a test of, of fabric markers. Just, you know, do a test of, you know, how well they mark and how well they wash out of fabric. That'd be a fun, that'd be fun to do sometime here. Oh, Catherine, you're starting yours and loving it. Awesome! Yeah, I, um, you know, based on how far we got cutting last time, I'm just thinking, dang, it's going to take us, you know, two weeks to just cut all this fabric. But I think uh, once we get going, it's going to, it's going to go pretty quick. And yeah, I, I do have to press each time too. I'm not, I'm not pre-pressed. I'm, I'm doing the whole process with you guys here. So if I didn't press yet, we're pressing. All right. One more on this edge and then I'll flip it around quick, do the other side, and we'll get cutting. So the width of fabric is the selvage, which is this little fuzzy edge here, to the other selvage. And it's usually around 42 to 44 inches or so. Uh, so that's, that's what uh, the instructions mean by width of fabric. The length is, just goes on and on and on in theory. But the width is usually, is, is that fixed, fixed width. The length is just how much you, you purchased from the bolt, really. Oh yes, Valerie, it's not a new iron. It is my travel iron. And, uh, well, actually it is kind of a new iron, but uh, it was intended to use as my travel iron and then I thought, you know what? My normal iron is always so heavy when I work on it here. So I uh, thought I'd get the travel iron out instead for my, you know, my tiny little workspace. Uh, so, so far so good. I'm liking using that instead. I think I, I put a link to what the, uh, what this iron was, I think in the comments from Monday's night's video. And Louise, thanks for the hashtag I love home quilt. So if you guys uh, saw in the in either my blog post or the instructions in this Facebook post, if you comment uh, with the hashtag I love home quilt, uh, you get entered and, and then also like my penguin and fish page here. Uh, those two things, you get entered to win a box of Aurifil or a fill thread. And I think it has a retail value of around $50 or a little over $40 or something. Uh, so it's like a crazy good deal. Uh, or fills the sponsor of this month's block, uh, of this month's uh, Jacqueline Steve's block, which is pretty cool. Uh, Jacqueline has gotten some pretty awesome sponsors for, for this quilt along, this block of the month quilt along. Uh, I know Ulfa is another sponsor, and we're we're using the Ulfa uh, folding mat, and also one of their quick release or like quick change blade uh, rotary cutters. So I'm testing those out during this project too, because they're one of the sponsors. I haven't used either before, so it's it's been kind of fun so far. All right, I do still kind of have a fold down the middle of this. Oh, need more thread, I know. Thread's like one of those hoardable items, isn't it? <laughs> Can never have too much, and uh, it's always nice using it up, though. You always feel good when you when you use it up. All right, I just have this kind of big main fold in the middle here, so I'm just gonna quickly let's see if we can go over that really quickly without without some starch. Ugh. It looks like I need some starch, so fine. We'll spray. We'll go one more round down the middle here, real quick. We'll have a nice flat fabric. Out here folds. So this fabric, I'm using fabric from my stash. So uh, some of it is very old and has been folded up for years and years. And this is most likely one of those fabrics. For sure, the next fabric we cut out. I think I've had that over 10 years. I'm finally using it though. I'm, I'm happy. I, all these, uh, all these projects we've been working on in the evening are really helping me use up my stash, which is awesome. All right. So yeah, that giveaway will end after Friday night's 
uh, live stream. So if you comment on Monday nights or uh, today's, tomorrow's, or Friday's, then, then you'll be entered, plus uh, liking the page. All right, guys, we are done. Let's get back to the cutting board here. Uh, this is that flatter, um, it's in that celebration flavor. Okay, so let's scooch that out of the way. So I can't cut 40 some inches all at once, so I'm gonna fold this in half. I'm gonna fold it uh, from the selvage to the selvage. Again, this tightly woven, in this case, it's pretty fuzzy. Yeah, I'm gonna just shush this in front of me here. Okay, there we go. Give myself some space. So we're gonna cut one nice straight edge here and then we will start cutting our, our measurements again. So I'm just gonna kinda kitty scratch this to line up the edge a little bit. And I think that's about as good as we're gonna get. So um, what I'm doing now is I'm gonna align see if you guys can see my bottom edge here. I'll scooch up a little. I'm going to line this fold. This is my folded edge. I'm going to line it along one of these lines on my, on my board here. Get that nice and straight. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. And then I will cut a good straight edge. Um, best press, Debbie. <coughs> Ooh, sorry guys, I have a little cough. Best press is much stiffer, a much stiffer starch, I think, than the flatter. So I'm just kind of using the flatter as just like a, a steam water substitute. I mean, it, it's not really adding much heft, much heft to my uh, fabric here compared to best press. Best press, I think, is a little more sticky, too. I don't know. It feels a hair stickier to me. All right. That's a little edge. Now we should have a nice straight edge here and then on that fold as well. So I can go in my scrap pile. All right. Next up to the instructions. Oh, what are the other flavors? So this is Celebration. This is a little flowery. Um, I think I have Fig. Also, that's one, right? I'm gonna have to look it up. And then there's yuzu, which is kind of an earthy, kind of, that's a little earthy patchouli-esque maybe smell. Maybe not quite patchouli, but kind of an earthy, I don't know, it's really good. And the fig, I, I really like too. They're kind of not easy to describe. This is a little more floral fruity, but in a gentle, gentle style yet. All right, so. Got my double ruler here. First of all, we need two more uh, two inch widths. So let's, let's start there. I'm gonna use this ruler because it's longer. So the reason I'm using a double ruler, a double ruler system is that I wanna keep this perfect straight edge and I'm right-handed. So I need to cut, I need to have the ruler on this side and um, my, my cutter on this side. So I would have to rotate all my fabric completely around so I could put my ruler here. So in, th in theory, I would be going from this side and cutting, right? Uh, that way I'd only have to use one ruler. But if I attempt to rotate this fabric around, I'm gonna lose that perfect straight edge. I'm gonna lose my fold. So instead of trying to rotate this around to cut it, I'm using a double ruler system. And what that means is I am going to, this is a two inches, so I'm gonna put uh, the two inch mark right on the edge of my fabric. So in theory, doing this ruler method is more accurate than using the lines on the, the mat because your fabric can move a little bit and you know this is accurate. accurate. So, okay, two inches. Let's, then I, I'm, I'm holding this down. This is at that two inch. And then I'm gonna just butt up the ruler right on that. So I'm perfectly butted up. Then I'm gonna hold this side down really well. Then I can remove this. And I know that's my two inches. And that way I can stay 
where I can cut on, on this side and I didn't, I didn't have to rotate my fabric at all. So that's, that's the reasoning behind the, the two ruler method. So I don't have to rotate my fabric in the middle and lose all my nice edges. Okay, so that's one of my two inch strips and I need one more. So I'm gonna just lift this up. Again, get my two inches down here. I'm measuring like way at the bottom of the ruler and way at the top of the ruler to get as accurate as I can. All right, putting pressure there and lining it up again, putting pressure on the other ruler, then I can remove that one. And you know, I always have my, I always have my safety on until right before I cut. I always stop cutting when I move my hand and then right when I'm done cutting, close it back up. That way you don't chop your fingers off, which is a good thing. <laughs> All right, that is our last, uh, our last two inch piece of fabric. So I'm putting that on my finished pile. Let's uh, check that off. So that's from, la from Monday night, I needed two more. We can check that off. Okay, so we need to cross cut those. So we've cut them the, the one way, now we need to chop them the other way uh, to these, we need 12, two inch by 18 inch strips. But you know what, since I have this width of fabric laying all nice here already, um, I am going to cut the rest of these. Cause this, um, I need five, three and a quarter is the width of the fabric. And I need six, two and a quarter is the width of the fabric. So I'm gonna keep going with the width of the fabric. And then I need to come back and cut this. So you know what, I'm gonna, they, I threw them on my finished pile, but I'm gonna take these off. So this pile I need to do I need to cross cut yet. But since we have since we have this perfect straight edge here, the width of the fabric, I am going to just continue cutting these other width of the fabric pieces. So moving on, I need five three and a quarter pieces. Okay, five three and a quarter. So this ruler is not wide enough for me to do the double. So let's let's take this ruler, I think. I need to keep this ruler here because it's my only ruler that's long enough to cut the width of fabric. So, all right, let's read that again. Three and a quarter. All right, so one, two, three inches and a quarter. I'm aligning all those quarter inch dots on the edge of my fabric. So same thing, you know, I don't need the double ruler to go the entire length. It could be just right there. Butt up that ruler against there. And we should have our three and a quarter. So just to double check, yep, three and a quarter. So I need five of these. Oh, Bonnie, you probably can't hear me if you lost the feed, but try just going out and coming back in. All right, there's one. Put that to the side. And I'm gonna just keep, I'm not gonna move my fabric until I don't have any more room left on my board, which actually is, coming up soon, uh, then I'll shuffle it over. I might need to cut my nice straight edge again, but I'm gonna just keep going. This is two, I think I can get one more after this before I have to move, move the fabric. Three and a quarter. I need five of these total. Measure twice, oh man, now you made me nervous. <laughs> You're right, measure twice. One, two, three and a quarter. Cutting is always, uh, freaks me out the most. This is my most uh, nervous part of quilting is getting getting these uh, cuts right. I always second guess myself on um, if I measured right or not. Do you ever cut from the left edge? I do sometimes cut from the left edge um, only when it was easy to turn my fabric around. So the reason I don't don't start on the left edge is because I needed to get that nice straight edge to start as my guide. And that's easier for me to cut the other direction. So I just deal with this, uh, I just deal with this double ruler system. But yeah, you can, I could flip this whole thing around and then just use the one ruler. And on smaller, smaller pieces, I do do that. I just cut with the one ruler. But for these big, long things, uh, you can't uncut, yeah. These big long things, I 
I like doing the double ruler system. All right, that is three. So we need two more, but before that I have to scooch everything over. I can flip it around, but if I flip it around, then I lose my nice edge here. I mean, at this point I could probably flip it around since I'm, I'm moving anyway. And I, I have a bunch of fabric. So I'm, I'm still trying to keep that nice edge though. So what I might do is now that I have my fabrics more contained, now I can actually just rotate my mat. And uh, then I'll be going from the other side. So I can show you guys what that looks like too. So there we go. I, my straight edge looks still looks pretty good. Now my folded edge is up at the top. So I have to, I still have to make sure that that's, that's aligned. I mean, we have moved the fabric quite a bit. So I want to make sure that this is still straight because when we unfold it, we don't want like a weird wonky piece because this is at an angle. We want that to be straight yet. So actually I may have to recut my straight edge, but we can, we can give that a try from, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure if this is going to work for me because I want to make sure that this is straight. So I'm moving my fabric around more than I want. All right, so now this is straight. That, that's the fold. That's what I want important. So now I might need to adjust, adjust this straight edge. And you know what? Let's give it a try. I'm gonna just trim off, to just get my straight edge good again, I'm gonna just trim off this tiny little piece. I'm using, right now I'm using the, the ruler as a guide. So I'm gonna try and trim off this piece and then I can use just the one ruler. But again, you know, this is why I don't especially like cutting it from this side because I only have, you know, like this eighth inch pressure, you know, just the eighth inch that I'm over here. I only have that much pressure uh, on the fabric from under my ruler. So this might squiggle a little and that's gonna make my straight edge not, not as nice. That's why I like doing it the other way, but maybe if I cut real slow. Seems like it's going okay, not moving much. All right, success. So now we can do just the one ruler method. So now our fold should be square and so should this. And there is something underneath here. Oh, my, my white label. Don't wanna cut that in half. All right, so we have three, I need two more. So uh, what was it again? Three and a quarter. So now I can just use the one ruler, one, two, three inches and a quarter. Align that edge. All right, here we go. So both methods work. Uh, depends what works best for you. Again, like I said, sometimes I like the two method just because I can get that nice straight edge going right away. All right, here's my last one for uh, for this cut, the, the three and a quarter. Oops, that's three and a half. Three and a quarter. My last one was three and a quarter. Dang, now I'm nervous. Yep, three and a quarter. Thought maybe I did that one three and a half too. All right. One, two, three, and a quarter. All right, we got it. All right, so those pieces are uh, done, but again, I need to, oh, you know what? I don't, I don't need to cross cut those. Those are done, so I can fully check those off. So those are for the border those uh, three and a quarter inch ones. So I am completely done with that. Remember, I still have to cross cut these. Uh, now we need six, two and a quarter pieces. So that's for the border as well. So six, two and a quarter pieces. I think I might scooch my fabric down already. I'm getting awfully close to the edge. I think I can fit it all. Well, I'll cut a few first. So, all right. Two and a quarter. I need six of them. One, two, and a quarter. So these are much smaller. Well, an inch smaller, I suppose. One, two, and a quarter. So 
This is one. Two and a quarter. This is the second one. I'm not really used to, I know this is kind of the way things are done in quilt world, but I'm not personally used to cutting out a whole quilt all at once, or I haven't, I haven't done it in a while. Uh, in my, my most recent quilts, I've been working on it. So it feels funny to me cutting out the entire quilt. Like it feels funny that I'm cutting out borders already, but it does make sense. It, it'll be nice to have all my fabric moved out of the way and I only have what I, what I need in front of me. I do like that a lot. I like getting the cutting done all at once. Just not used to it. All right, that is three. I need three, oh wait, is that three or four? Nope, that's three. So I need to scooch down. Oh, you love it, to, love to cut it all at once. Yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm gonna really like this too. I like the idea of having it done because cutting, like I said, is kind of a huge bear for me. All right, so again, I, I'm gonna try and match up my nice fold at the top here. I'm getting a little wrinkly down here. Hopefully I, my straight edges are together yet. I might try and get them together so I don't have to cut another straight edge. Just kitty scratch it a little bit. If you just lightly scratch it like this, I call it kitty scratching, then you can move one layer of the fabric, just tiny little, tiny little increments so I can line it, line it up. And you know what, I think that's, I think that's in the good enough realm right there. All right, let's cut three more of those. Ooh, can I get, yeah, I think I can get three more out of here. So I might have to, I might have to cut out a little piece from my fat quarter. I wasn't sure I'd be able to get it out of these two yards. So might have to break out a fat quarter for that last little bit. All right, so this is number four. Maybe I won't. I might, I might still have enough. Five. That'd be awesome if I didn't have to use up a fat quarter just for a little square. One, two and a half, one, two and a quarter. You like to cut the other borders later. Oh, in case your piecing wasn't accurate. That's a super great idea, Debbie, but oh well, I guess I'm doing it now. Yeah, there seems also, there's all those squares in uh, some of the border, that beginning border, and um, I don't know, that means I'm gonna need a real accurate scant quarter inch seam allowance later, so we're gonna have to do a test of that. You haven't made any quilts for a long time that I cut the whole thing, oh, except for baby quilts. Oh, interesting, Joe. Yeah, so that's, I mean, you know, I've been working on the Splendid Sampler for the past two years, so that, uh, nothing was cut out really beforehand. And then I've been working on uh, that jean quilt, and for that, I, I didn't cut beforehand either. Uh, so it's just, it feels funny to me, even though this seems like a logical way to do it all at once. All right, I think this was six. Let's just double count, double check. One, uh, two, three, four five, six. Excellent. So that is for the border. I believe we are completely done with that then. So let's check it off. Uh, cut six, two and a quarter inch with the fabric did that. So now we need, we still have to cross cut these, but we need from scraps cut two, two and a half inch squares. And you know what? I think I can get a two and a half inch cut out of here. So I'm just going to do that. Um, the whole way because why not and then I'll cross cut quickly just two out of here. Two little stray two and a half inches. Let's double check. Two and a half. One, two and a half. All right. Excellent. Woohoo! That means I don't have to break open those extra fat quarters I had. I got all of it out of that two two yard cuts. Oh that makes sense Joe that you don't you haven't made a decision on the border yet, so 
so you um, decide that later. All right, I'm going to rotate this, and it's still it's still folded in half, so I do have two layers of fabric here. The selvage is way back in there, so I'm going to kind of I'm going to scooch it down a little bit more, and I'm going to cut here for a straight edge. We can use a small ruler this time. I'm going to line uh, the ruler with my edges at the bottom. Oh, there you go. Uh, my uh, the line on there, and then also straight up this way. All right, and now let's just quickly do our so I don't have to flip this around. I can just quickly get my other ruler in here. We'll line that so it's nice and square, two and a half inches. Okay. And that is that. Here are my, uh, those two, two and a half inch squares. So uh, that's it. So this ends up being a scrap and I do not need those two extra fat quarters I had out here. So I'm gonna scooch those aside. And now all we have to do is, we still have to cross cut these, right? So first of all, let's get our instructions out. And we're done. We have our two two and a half inch squares. And now we just need to do this. 12, two inch, these are two inch by 18 and a half strips. So I'm gonna rotate my mat again just so it's back in the normal, normal position here. And all right, so I wouldn't normally do this. But since I know I have a perfect, nice, fresh new blade on this ruler, I'm going to just try and stack all of these guys up all at once. Which is a little crazy. But again, since I have the new ruler, actually I might make two stacks of two. That would that'd be a little bit easier. So all right, I have six of these strips. I'm going to put three on top of each other. I'm going to really try and get these edges to match. And I'm I'm laying it over one of my rule lines because I'm gonna cut off all these all these uh, selvage bits. But I'm I'm trying to do it all at once so I can go really really quick. Cause I need I need 12 of them. So these are already doubled. So here like one cut will give me six, right? And I need 12 total. So this is a this is six pieces of fabric um, on top of each other. And you know what? Let's put these other six. It's actually three strips, but they they're still doubled up, which makes it you know two pieces of fabric. So let's just put this a row lower, and I'm aligning that bottom edge here. All right, that's the first one. Ooh, this one's not matching up very well, but we'll take care of that. All right, that's pretty good. And here's our, our last one. Again, let's kind of kitty scratch a little just so we're trying to get these in line. What new ruler? Did I get? Oh, this is a new cutting board, Donna. Is that is that what you mean? This is a one of those foldable cutting mats. I'll show you that in a sec. So, all right. So I have these kind of all these selvages hanging up here. So I'm gonna just take. I'm gonna grab this ruler, and I'm going to just using my mat as a guide. I'm going to cut off all those edges. There. So I can do two rows at once which is kind of nice. All right, so I have um, six layers of fabric here and six layers of fabric here, which is great because I need 12 total and I can do this all at, you know, with the one cut. Um, so 18 and a half, you know what? I might just rotate this around again. Let's see if this works. I haven't really tried this before, but all right, so I'm rotating that around again. So there we are. I might just take this ruler which is pretty wide and go 
18 and a half. Oh, let's go this way. So 18 and a half is right there. So I'm aligning it at that 18 and a half mark. Man, I've never done this before like this, so this is kind of kind of silly, but I think it'll work. Why not? And I can just do this in one cut. All right, I'm aligning those edges. So, okay, and just because I'm nervous, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and a half. All right. Freaks me out. Got to double check. All right, so now I just need to snip off these edges, and I can just use this edge of the ruler for both. There. These guys are scraps. And we have our 12... 18 and a half strips. All right, perfect. So we got that done. That done pretty quick. So all right, I'm gonna just plop those. So our um, white, here's all the white. Our white is officially complete, completely cut out. So just because it's fun to do, let's put a check mark right there. And we can check mark off white. White is done. So I'm gonna throw my label right on top of there and I'm gonna move all of this into a safe spot uh, up here. Okay, white complete. Oh, let me show you the mat quick too. Uh, this mat, mat is uh, 17 inches by 24 inches. I actually prefer a larger mat than this, but uh, I'm testing this out. But look, it has a little fold in the middle. So it actually folds up to a smaller mat for travel. And then you can unfold it, and then it's double the size. And uh, this little part where it's you know folded, that, that hasn't affected me at all yet as far as cutting. So uh, kind of neat, uh, great for a travel. So um, I don't know, I, I've, I've seen these online before and I always wondered what it was like. And so I'm, I'm excited, I get a chance to, a chance to, chance to give it a try. So this is by Ulfa. Um, I'll put a link to it in my, the, in the YouTube replay for sure. But all right, let's see if we can get a little more cutting done tonight. So next up, we did white, next up is dark pink. So if you remember, my dark pink is actually not dark pink. My dark pink is actually this blue. I'm, I'm actually going to use it for the dark pink and the pink floral. So this is my dark pink. Clearly not dark pink, but it is it is for, for my quilt. So basically, anywhere there is... Oops, here it is. Anyway, anywhere there is dark pink, which is this all these uh, little triangles and stuff, and, and these all these squares, whenever there's dark pink, what I actually mean is this, which is kind of funny. And I'm actually going to use the same fabric for this pink floral. So all the dark pinks and all the pink florals is my blue fabric. So that's why I had to label the blue fabric dark pink when, she, when it's, you know, clearly not. All right, so uh, it looks like we have to do several width of fabric cuts. Let's see, does this go to the next page? No, so, so this is it for dark pink. So with a fabric, with a fabric, with a fabric. So in that case, uh, I am going to press a little bit of this. So now this I have a lot of yardage for, and this is that fabric that I've had uh, forever, like cut and folded and, um, you know, stored funny. Gosh, do I really want to iron it? So I still kind of have a, a, a flat edge here for, um, for the fold. I'm kind of tempted, uh, you know what? I think I, I think I better iron it. And you know what? I think I'm going to start from the other end because it'll be easier to trim. So here we are. Uh, let's press a little bit of this and uh, then we'll do it. Oh, did I cross cut the one inch strips? Let's see, was that with the white? Did I miss something here? 12, two, we did that. We did that. Oh, did I not? Oh no, oh, I didn't have any. That's not in this part yet, so. Weird, yeah, it looks like there's cross-cut bits in the in the border, but I don't know, according to this, I didn't have to do that yet. Did I cut one, four, ten inch? No, I don't have to, 
I guess in the instructions, I don't have to do that yet. So I'm not going to worry about that. Um, so Jenna, you're referring to like in theory, all these spots have little squares in, uh, but I don't see it in these cutting instructions yet. So I'm going to just assume that that happens later. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to bother with it yet. Uh, so, all right, I'm going to continue on to here. Let's, let's press a little bit in. So I'm going to open this up and I'll press, press a little ways and then we'll refold it. I won't press the whole thing, obviously, because that would take forever. So once we get to areas that need to be folded yet, then, um, or needed to be pressed yet, we'll, we'll just press again. We'll go, we'll go a little ways though. This, I don't know, maybe isn't as wrinkly. So same deal, I'm going to spritz. Spritz a little. And then I'll just press it a bit. I would like to get some more cut today, so let's try and go as fast as we can with the pressing. Oh, thanks, Sue. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for this fabric. So this is one of those fabrics. This is actually the start. This is what I chose all the rest of the fabrics for my quilt from. And that's usually what I do. So when I choose fabric for a quilt, I usually start with some showcase fabric, like one fabric that I am really, really excited to use. And this fabric I purchased uh, when I was in San Francisco over 10 years ago. And I thought it was so pretty. I got it at Britix Fabrics, which is uh, right in the middle of Union Square uh, in San Francisco. And uh, I just loved it. And it's been sitting around, um, sitting around forever. Second cut from top. Oh, did I, did I miss that? This cross cut? Second cut from top of white, four by one, cut four, one inch with the fabric, and then we cut, yeah, so I'm not cutting 10, I'm cutting, uh, I, from that I'm cutting nine and a half inch strips and 10 and a half inch strips. I'm not, I did those already. They're, they're nine and a half inch strips and 10 and a half inch strips though, they're not, they're not um, a bunch of one inch strips. Um, so, so yeah, I, I did that already. Yep, so I think I think we're right so far. I'm just going by what the instructions say. And uh, uh, we haven't cut the, we have not cross cut, as far as how I understand the instructions, I haven't cross cut them yet into the one inch strips. Just a nine and a, nine and a half inch and 10 and a half inch one inch strips. All right, so there's a little bit of pressing. Let's, let's scooch it down a little. I'll press a hair more, maybe just one, one more of this distance, and then, then we'll just start cutting. So let's, let's move it to about here. Let's get this fold in here too. But yeah, we did, I think we did the other cross cuts already. I'll have to check, and you know what? Um, if I didn't do it, then I will just have to Go back and do it once once I start divvying up this fabric. Because after, after I cut all of each color, then I'll be going back through the blocks and being like, okay, block one needs two of these strips and one of the, the strip that we've already pre-cut. And if it, if it ends up that I forgot to cross cut it, I, I'll do it then. So I'm not gonna worry about it now. But yeah, I think I think I've done the cross cuts for all the rest of them because uh, I cross cut them as as I cut. It wasn't until the middle of me cutting that I decided, oh, let's just keep going with these with the fabrics. So yep, I think I got all those done, all the other cross cuts. Did that on Monday. All right, there's a pretty good fold in there. Yeah, I'm gonna just uh, finish this little with the fabric uh, pressing and then I'll fold it up and we'll start our cutting. I can always unfold it and, and press a little bit more later if I need to. 
Actually, that looks pretty good there, but we'll, we'll press it still. All this fabric. This is, uh, this is my biggest piece of fabric. I have, I think I have three yards still all in one piece sitting here. So it's, it's quite a bit to maneuver compared to just those little one yard cuts I had. This is a three yard, three plus yard cut. But yeah, so I, I bought this fabric and uh, uh, finally when I was going through fabric for this project, I was like, you know what? This is the time. I am going to use that fabric that I've been hoarding forever. And, uh, and uh, it's going to be the main theme for this quilt. Yep, width of fabric is selvage to selvage. You're exactly right. So I'm going to rotate this mat again so it's tall enough to cut cut the selvage to selvage. So here we go. I am going to, uh, so the width of fabric, it goes from this, the selvage, which, uh, you know, has all the numbers of what's being printed or like with that solid fabric, it had that little frayed edge. So this is the width of fabric then, or this is the one selvage. Then we're going to go along the width of the fabric until we get all the way up to the other selvage. So from that selvage, the 42 inches or so down to this selvage, that's the width of the fabric. So just because it's hard to cut 44 inches, I'm going to fold it in half, which means I'm going to match, match the selvage. So I just fold it in half. So the selvages are next to each other and I'm going to just shake that out. So it's, it's easier for me to grab. All right, there we go. Matching up those selvages. Okay. So now I should have a fold starting here at the bottom. I know, isn't it pretty? So here we go. I'm, I'm getting this fold here at the bottom and that fold is what I'm going to line up on a straight edge. I'm still trying to, there's so much bulk over here that I'm trying to uh, just flatten it out a little bit. Oh, you're new to quilting. Oh yes. Yeah. So you guys, um, everyone's at different levels and I, I try to explain things as I go. But if, if, uh, you have a question like, what am I meaning, uh, with the fabric or, or why am I using two rulers to cut? Uh, feel free to totally ask. I am. That's, that's perfectly fine. I, you know, if you don't know, then other people don't know either. And I want to make sure that everyone has a good experience, you know, this, and I don't, I want you guys to feel confident and, you know, learn some new terms and, and all that. So yeah, feel free to ask. All right. I think we are all straightened out here. So you can see the top of the ruler right here. I'm going to cut from that edge down to this edge now. And now since it's folded in half, I can use this ruler, which is long enough to do that. So, uh, again, I'm making sure that this bottom fold, is along one of these edges because then I know that when it's unfolded, it'll be nice. It'll be as a square as I can get it. So the fold is on that nice edge. And now since this edge is all frayed and not perfect, I'm going to cut. So it's square to this fold here. And I'm going to do that since I aligned that bottom on the fold, I should be able to go from one edge of this, uh, cutting board to the other on the same line and be able to trim off that edge there. So I think we're good. Cutting into my pretty fabric. All right, a little scrappy. There, now we should have a nice square edge, this straight edge to that, that fold that's at the bottom. And since I don't want to mess this up and I have tons of fabric, this is a scenario when I'm going to use the two, two ruler method again. But what are we cutting? Let's see. All right. We need to cut one five and a half inch strip, the width of the fabric. So that's what we just did, the width of the fabric. And then we need to take that and cross cut it into eight, five and an eighth squares. So, Again, in this case, since I have my width of fabric all laid out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all the width of fabric pieces. So that's this one, this next one, I have to cut some width of fabric and here, I'm going to cut those first. Then I'm going to go back. Once I can get all the rest of the fabric out of the way, I'm going to go back and cross it, the, uh, cross cut it, which just means, you know, I've, I've cut it this way. Now I need to rotate and cut all my little pieces out of the long piece, right? 
So I'm gonna cut all these long with the fabric pieces first, just because I have my fabric all perfectly set up and I don't wanna to have to redo it a bunch of times. So those three things I'm gonna cut and then I'll go back and cut the smaller pieces from those strips. So first up, I need to cut one five and an eighth inch width of fabric. So with the fabric, we got that all set up already. Um, I think I'm gonna use this because this has a good eighth inch markings on here. I think so. Uh, let's see, what was it? Five, where'd it go? Five and an eighth. So one, two, three, four, five. And an eighth is right there and right there. So I'm measuring that five and an eighth inch point. I'll scooch down for you guys. Sorry about the light glare. All right, one, two, three, four, five and an eighth, just because I always have to double count because I'm, you know, I know the ruler says five and an eighth, but I always have to see if the ruler is right, I guess. All right, so butting that right up against there. Again, this way I don't have to move my fabric all around to get that left cut. So, all right, five and an eighth. Oh, freaking out again. Yep, five and an eighth. Double check that that's what the instructions say, and it does, and I just need one cut. All right, so that is our five and an eighth inch strip. We will come back to this piece We'll turn it sideways and we will cut our five and a half inch, five and an eighth inch squares out of that. But for now, I'm gonna set that to the side because I can leave all of this where it is and cut the rest of this. So I'm gonna check mark that we did this, but we did not, we did not do this yet. All right, so I need three two and a half inch width of fabric strips. So three, and for, for my double ruler, I'm gonna use this long one just because, you know, I have, the points between them are longer, so in theory I'll get a straighter edge. Uh, two and a half, let's see, three, two and a half. So one, two and a half, lining that half inch mark. Is that the half? Yeah, all along this perfect, this should be a perfect straight edge still. Should be perfectly square with that fold at the bottom and this. So all right, I need Oh yes, uh, I have the brand new mat and it is so much easier cutting. And you know, a fresh blade on the rotary cutter, that makes a huge, huge, huge difference. So, okay, two and a half inches. Let's just double check that again. Yep, two and a half. Uh, we need three of these. All right, that's one. We'll just scooch that to the side. These will cross cut as, oh, I know, we, these we don't, this, this we don't have to cross cut, so that's it. I'll, I'll show you the instructions in a bit. So awesome, so we don't have to cross cut everything. Okay, this one's two. All right. And one more, and we still have, ooh, I think we might be able to make all our cuts while I'm still on the mat. I'm falling off the mat a little bit here. Don't have much, much room left, but after this, I only need four one inch strips. So that shouldn't, I should, ha I should have enough for that, I'm hoping, before, without having to move all my fabric around. Okay, one, two and a half. And I'd like to finish cutting this this pink. You know, I know it's not pink, but it represents my dark pink color. I'd like to finish this up today, hopefully. So, all right, our three two and a half inch strips. Here we are, right here. They're so pretty. So that's the three two and a half inch with the fabric strips. We don't have to cross cut that, so that's completely done. All we have left is uh, we have to cut four one inch width of fabric strips, then we're done with the width of fabrics. All right, put those to the side, they're done. I think I can squeeze out, I'm almost off the mat here, but I think I can squeeze out four one inch strips. All 
All right. We actually might not get to the cross cutting tonight. But I'm happy we got done with that, that white fabric. I'm excited I finally get to use my pretty main showcase fabric. Okay, that's one strip. All right, we need three more. Oops, just scoot you a little bit more out of my way. Oh man, it's nice to, to cut out all this fabric beforehand, but I am itching to get sewing block one. Block one, we have the instructions for block one, but we're cutting out all of the fabric for the entire quilt first, so. But man, I wanna get to that block one. So I wanna get through this cutting. All right, two more of these. Right, and I'm almost off my mat. All right, and one more. And I think um, I need those two two and a half inch strips or two and a half inch squares, and I might just chop another two and a half inch thing off of this, like how we did for the white. So I might still move the fabric over and, and cut that two and a half inch bit while I'm at it. Okay, there we are. Our four strips. I'm gonna throw those aside. Those we will cross cut in a second here, but let's get, um, so from the scraps, I need two and a half inch, but I don't really have any scraps yet, so I'm gonna just cut another strip. So I'm gonna try and scooch this over without messing up my edge. Try and get that on a, on a straight edge here. All I need is a two and a half inch strip from this. So you know what? I think that's gonna be as good as that's gonna get. Let's get the two and a half inch here. We'll have a lot of extra of this, but maybe we can use it later. Two and a half inch, let's double check. Yep, two and a half inch. All right. Okay, we are done with all this excess fabric for now. Um, we are using it for the dark or for the floral fabric, so I will need it later. But let's start out by cross cutting. I'm going to flip it because I can see the edge here. I need to get to um, two and a half inch pieces out of here. Ooh, am I lined up at the? Yeah. There we go. Cut off the selvage. All right, and let's get another ruler in here and do two and a half inches. This has a little half inch mark there. So there is two and a half. Okay, now this is a scrap. We don't need this piece. I'm gonna put that to the side. And here is the first cross cut we did. We have two, two and a half inch pieces of fabric there. So this is done, our bottom part. So let's try, I mean, we're getting a little late here, but I, I think it'd be nice to try and cut, cross cut our guys right away, because then we're done with the dark pink, which is you know what this is representing. So, all right, we need eight uh, five, and a half, five and an eighth inch squares from this one piece of fabric. So I'm going to, I'm going to fold this a few times so I can do all my cutting at once. 
So all I have to do is we're going to cut off this, this uh, fold here. So right now we are at four layers of fabric. And again, since, since I have a, a perfect, nice new blade, I am going to attempt to cut, to do this again, to get myself eight layers of fabric. But I do need to make sure that I have enough, uh, the width of the fabric here. So let's, let's see if I have five and an eighth inches. Because if not, then, then I can't do it this way. So one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I think I don't have quite enough. Oh, maybe I do. Oh, too close to call. So I'm going to, let's see, where's this selvage? I'm going to scooch this up a little bit more. And I think we'll just do it with two cuts instead of me trying to do it all at once. But I think we still might just be able to fit it. All right, I'm gonna cut off as little as I can here. There, I think that's the best I can do. So let's let's give that a go. So this is gonna be my straight edge. Oh, sorry you guys. There we go. I'm lining up, lining up that fold. I'm hoping to cut off just the selvage and just this one little fold. Just barely. Okay, and now let's get five and an eighth. Okay, one, two, three, four, five and an eighth. Get that all lined up. So five and an eighth. All right. Oh, I think we'll just be able to get two cuts out of here. All right, so this is four. So we should have one, two. Get that apart. Three, four. And we need four more. So I think we can just get it out of here. Let's hope. So five and an eighth. Oh, perfect. Great. So we can, we can get our five and an eighth. We can get our eight pieces out of this one cut, which is excellent. Just enough fabric. Okay, that is our scrap. And so this was four. And we have the five, six, seven, and eight. So here are our eight pieces. Those are done. We can check that off. And I think we just have one more thing to really do. We need eight, uh, eight and a half inch strips and eight nine and a half inch strips from, from these. So from these little one inch strips. So let's layer these. I'm going to take half of them. We need um, eight of one. So there's two here, I'm going to put those aside, and two here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold each of these in half again, because then that'll give me four, right? There we go. Same with up here. Fold those in half. I'm lining up the, the selvage mark with the fold. Folds tucked underneath there. So, all right, I need the first cut is eight and a half. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, yeah, we'll have plenty to do this. So, all right, I'm going to trim those. This is, you know, I could make this a little straighter, but I think we'll be okay ultimately. So, double cutting. These are going to be our eight and a half inches. All right there, so now we have a nice straight edge. And, all right, let's, let's use this guy. Oop, my iron's in the way. Eight and a half. Be right there. Ooh, I have a little bit of selvage there, but I'm gonna just leave it. That'll go in the seam allowance later. So I wanna make sure that 
my line is matched up. All right, that's eight and a half. Great, so let's double check. Yep, eight and a half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half. All right, we are fine. Let's scooch this out of the way. Just a hair. Okay, great. These are scraps. And here are our eight, eight and a half inch pieces. And now we need to do that same thing, but cut eight, nine and a half inch pieces. So we had enough fabric to do that last time. So I'm just going to do the same thing. Let's fold this in half. I'm gonna flip it around though so I can see the fold and the selvage instead. Right, like that's okay. Okay, let's make sure those are lined up. Fold that in half. All right, nine and a half inch strips. So let's trim. This is our last cut of the night. Nine and a half. Right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and a half. Excellent. So let's get another ruler on there. Okay. And that is that. So here are our nine and a half inch strips. And let's just double check we got everything. Yep, we cut those five and an eighth inch squares and we did these one by eight and a half inch strips and one by nine and a half inch strips. So dark pink is done. So I am going, and it's right here. This is everything we cut for dark pink. Uh, I'm going to take you know, this blue I'm going to use for dark pink and pink floral. I am going to leave the dark pink label with this stack here. So that is that. So I'm going to, we're going to, I think we're going to skip ahead tomorrow since I have all the rest of this fabric out. And since I'm using it for my pink floral, I think I'm going to jump ahead in the cutting instructions to the pink floral uh, tomorrow so I can finish cutting. Oh, this is all that's, this is all I need to cut for it. So um, we'll do, we'll be cutting borders and binding already from, from this fabric, cause then I can get it out of my way and then I'll go back to cutting the remaining fabric here. So uh, we'll continue with this same fabric tomorrow night, but it will be, it won't be dark pink anymore. It will be pink floral. I'm gonna use the same fabric for both. So, all right, we have dark pink and white done. So, all right, I'm going to flip you around and we'll call it an evening. Hey there, guys. So all of those little pieces are done. Look how small these little nine and a half inch by one inch pieces are. Uh, they will be cute and fun to sew with. So, all right, here is again what we're working on. The Jacqueline Steves quilt, block of the month quilt, cutting out all our pieces for the whole project which is gonna be awesome. Once we start sewing, we're gonna whip through this thing so quickly because all our pieces are ready to go. We don't have to stop and cut anything else out, I don't think so. I'm excited. Uh, I'm, I was really excited to cut into this fabric. My fabric that I've been hoarding for, you know, a decade, and now it's finally gonna live as the showcase in a quilt. So I am super stoked to get going with it. Uh, that's how I usually work. I pick my showcase fabric and then uh, decide the other fabrics based on that one that I really want to work with. So that's, that's what we're doing here. Uh, thanks again, guys, for joining me. I will be here tomorrow evening at 9.30 p.m. Central. Uh, we'll continue cutting out the fabric for this project. I am doing the entire project from beginning to end here on Facebook Live. So if you have a question about anything, any part of the process, uh, don't he uh, hesitate to ask. Uh, yeah. 
This will go up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube after this is done here, and it will stay here on the Penguin and Fish Facebook page as well. So awesome, guys. I will catch you tomorrow night. Thanks again for joining me. Adios.